Welcome to Pressure Control Part 2. This is a companion video to the first pressure control presentation I made that you can find on my YouTube channel. I decided to make Part 2 a separate video because, one, it takes us a little more in depth into some of the concepts we talked about in the first presentation, but also it's hard to create some of the things I'm talking about uh, on the graphics on a ventilator with a test lung. So I just um, made some slide graphics here and we'll talk about some things in a little more depth. First, let's talk about the anatomy of a pressure control breath, which we talked about in the previous video, but it, it's good to review it. So we have our pressure over time and our flow over time scalars. And the way the breath starts is that flow goes in really fast. Patient can pull as much as they want uh, or the manufacturer presets it, um, but it is fast, which is nice. It fills the, the very fast beginning flow, fills the large airways that don't build a lot of pressure, but will accept a lot of volume. And then as it senses the smaller airways, the flow starts to, the resistance of the smaller air, airways flow starts to drop. And once it hits pressure, the preset pressure, in this case 25, flow will return to zero. No more flow goes in because the, the desired pressure has been set or has been met. And this is a pressure limit. But a pressure control breath is not pressure cycled. Remember, cycle is what turns a breath off. It's not turned off by meeting pressure. Flow goes in till the pressure is met, but it doesn't cycle or end the breath and allow for exhalation until the preset time has been met. So I time in pressure control doesn't change flow. It changes how long before the patient can exhale. So what we can use that for to our advantage is that um, when flow returns to zero, what you'll see here is that we follow this line up, pressure is met here at 25, and then we have this hold time represented by this arrow. And so this whole time we get inspiratory hold. So again, flow goes in until pressure's met, pressure is held until the eye time is up, and then they can exhale. So what do we get out of that hold? Well, if you think about Anytime we hold gas into, in the lungs, which we usually do by PEEP, but um, in this case, we're doing it by holding the inspiration in there, we get alveolar recruitment and oxygenation. Remember, we oxygenate by either adding more molecules of oxygen through FiO2, or we can pressurize the ones we have. So this pressure hold actually creates a great scenario where uh, we're gonna get these advantages. So if we wanna hold pressure, why not just use more PEEP? Well, if you think about it, if we use a lot of PEEP and we hold pressure in there continuously, then we do get some negative cardiovascular effects sometimes. So this essentially just adds one more tool in our tool belt for oxygenating our patients. In pressure control, we can do that through FiO2, PEEP, and eye time. Another point, is uh, back to, we don't control flow, but during this whole inspirate, inspiratory time, if there's a leak in the system, we may see a little dip in the, in the pressure hold here. And then what will happen is if that happens before the eye time is over, pressure control will go ahead and put more flow into the patient to top that off. So this is a great mode for, uh, leaky systems, which could be you know, chest tube, leaky cuff, cuffless trachs, you know, things like that. So it's really good for that too. Okay, so let's talk about setting eye time. We already said that if we lengthen eye time, we get the hold and all the advantages of that. But what if it's set too short? Well, remember what the, when the pressure control ventilation breath begins, 
flow goes in until the pressure is met. So in this case, we start from our baseline PEEP of five, and we'll say this is a vent that puts inspiratory pressure on top of PEEP. So in this case, it's gonna push an inspiratory pressure of 20. As you can see, that's our set inspiratory pressure on top of the PEEP of five to yield a peak pressure should be 25. Remember we said this particular ventilator pushes the 20 on top of the five, but we're not reaching that, are we? So let's look at our eye time here. It looks like it's set at 0.6, which is pretty short. So flow goes in on this patient. The lung is filling, 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 trying to hit that PIP of 25. But because the eye time is set so short, it's only hitting 20. In other words, the eye time cut it off before it had time to fill to its peak of 25. So while eye time is usually an oxygenation strategy, this is the one scenario where if we lengthened eye time, we would actually get more volume. And really we could set we could actually drop the inspiratory pressure setting to 15 and it would get the same result as it is here. I mean, we have it set at 20 because we want 20, but our eye time is so short, it's not even building to where, you know, the, the pressure that we, um, that we want. And like we said before, in this scenario, uh, we don't have any inspiratory holds, so we're losing our oxygenation and our alveolar recruitment uh, that we normally get out of pressure control. So you can see it's, it's, a, it's a problem for several reasons. So how do you tell if it's too short? Well, again, you look and see if when you're checking your vent or setting it up, you should determine what the PIP should be. In other words, what, what should the peak inspiratory pressure be? If it's a ventilator that sets inspiratory pressure on top of PEEP, then like in this case, it would be 25. And so you look and see if it's hitting 25. And if it's not, then you go down and you look at your flow waveform. And what you'll see is flow goes in. And remember, flow would normally drop off to zero as it hits pressure, but we have a little chop off here. It's kind of a little point, it goes straight down. And then if we could see the expiratory flow waveform, it would go right into the expiratory flow waveform. And so if we're not hitting the pressure, we think it should, and we have this little chop off, then uh, we know eye time is set too short. And again, the fix for that then is to lengthen it. That way we get that additional volume and we get our hold for alveolar recruitment and oxygenation. Okay, so let's talk about different kinds of ventilators. Um, really should get familiar with uh, the ventilators that you use where you work because they read them a couple different ways. So let's look at the one on the left here. The one on the left represents the vent like we talked about on the previous slide. This will put the uh, set inspiratory pressure on top of PEEP. So in this scenario, if you look, we added some PEEP and it went ahead and moved the set inspiratory pressure with the PEEP, keeps the pressure on top of the PEEP. So our pressure change or Delta P remains the same on a vent like this. These are nice because whenever you make a PEEP change, it keeps your delta P. The disadvantage is that obviously if you raise the PEEP on a vent like this, your peak inspiratory pressure goes up. Now let's look at the one on the right. The one on the right, the set inspiratory pressure, in this case 15, is the PIP all the time. So if we add PEEP to this ventilator type, which uh, like the Dreger acts like this, the, the Puritan-Bennett series 
uh, and the servo acts like the graphs on the left, uh, the dragger and uh, the BiPAP models, they act like the ones on the right. So on that scenario, uh, you can see that if you add PEEP, your PIP stays the same, so it, it kind of crunches out your delta P and therefore will reduce your tidal volumes, which affects your PCO2 and your pH. So on event like the one on the right, every time you make a PEEP change, you should make a corresponding inspiratory pressure setting change to keep the same delta P. So in this case, on the one on the right, if we added PEEP of five, we would want to go ahead and change our inspiratory pressure setting to 20, which would keep the same delta P of 15. And I hope this was helpful for you to understand pressure control a little better.